Greetings. Hello. Welcome to today. Here we are again. Thank you for being here. We will, you know, move through a nice little balance of flowiness. We'll build a little bit of heat, but we'll also move through easing tension from the head all the way down to the toes. So if you have tension anywhere between those spaces, the class will probably be great for you. <laughs> so let's come to the top of the mat in Tadasana. Feet hip distance apart. Hips aligned over the heels. And the shoulders aligned over the hips. Close your eyes for a moment so you can feel this sensation of like leaning back almost. Like there's an imaginary wall there and you catch your toes on your mat as you feel the weight move into your heels, but you can also notice the lift through the arches of your feet. Your arms just relax down by the sides, allowing yourself to just kind of stand here in space. And it gives almost a sensation of lightness when we come into this space of alignment. Suddenly it's easier to open the chest and you can feel the palms face forward as the shoulders pull slightly open. Breathing in. Breathing out, you feel your toes push down. Your legs get longer your belly button pull in and your chest lift up. You're opening yourself all the way from the heart down to the fingertips. And you're rooting yourself from the heart down the spine into the hips into the heels. And we collect those forces as we inhale, circle the arms around and up. Find the reach in Hasta Tadasana. So pausing here, reaching fingertips upward. Your shoulders are still pressing down. Make sure that you don't feel stress in your neck. So you're just gazing upward to the place that feels easy. Breathe in, breathe out again with ease. Feel your chest reach up as your shoulder blades slide down. Feel your hips slide slightly back, nail your heels down to the ground. And on your next exhale, hinge at the hips to swan dive forward. So open your arms nice and wide. Catch your hands behind your back. Interlace the fingers, cross one thumb over the other. Draw your elbows together and then work to lengthen your arms to your extent. Feel your hips pull backward in space. So this will make it a little easier to have your legs straight. You feel your big toes push down, your belly pull in, your knuckles reach away. Let your head relax and look between your knees and release your hands all the way down. Let's inhale to Ardha Uttanasana, gaze forward on a breath in. On the breath out, fold, look toward your shins. From here, walk your hands in line with your feet and just in tiny little bits, Feel your hips slide backwards in space. We're talking like a millimeter of movement. So you feel the weight in your heels. Your fingertips help you grip. If you can, look to your shins. So lots of space in the back of the body. Shift your weight toward balls of the feet a bit more. Walk your hands forward. Ardha Uttanasana. Good. Now this time, plant your palms here. So your hands are still under your shoulders or even a little bit ahead. You might prefer a little bit further forward. Pull your hips back in space and let your head relax. So it's just like downward dog. This is the feeling that we're kind of going for in downward dog where we have our hips pulling our weight back so that we're light through the upper body. Because right now you could float your hands off the mat, right? And just reach the fingers forward. Yeah, then just land the fingers back down. 
Shift your weight forward, find your Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift, inhale onto your fingertips. And exhale, bend your knees, lower the hips to the heels, let your heels lift. Then just hang out here, see if you can keep your legs together so the knees are pointing forward. Breathe in and breathe out. Your fingertips are on the mat, either side of the legs. Your hips lift up, your heels stay up. Now lower your heels down. Good, so your feet are hip distance apart, all 10 toes point forward. Inhale, lift your heels. Straighten your arms, gaze slightly forward. So you're in Ardha Uttanasana with your heels lifted. Now keep your heels lifted, gazing slightly forward and start to lower your hips down toward your heels. Good, breathe in. Breathe out, fingertips push down. You're pushing into the balls of your feet, lifting the hips up. So the heels are still high and then lower the heels down. Walk your hands forward, plant them on the mat and relax your head. So find that action of your hips pulling back. So your hands are down, but you could easily lift them up and it wouldn't really change your pose except for a little bit of the extra stretch you get in your upper back. Breathe in, breathe out. And nice and easy. Bend your knees just so you can sit kind of halfway down. Walk your hands onto your thighs, push your hands on your thighs, and then lift your chest up and straighten your legs. Hamstring town, circle the arms, breath in. Breath out, hands to heart center as you step the right knee up. Then just open the right knee out. Beautiful. Bring it back to center and down. Left side up. Out to the left. Back to center. And down. Right side up, open up, lengthen the leg, bend the knee, back to center, step it down, left side, up and open, practice lengthening your edge, bend, we come back and down. One more, right side up, open the door, lengthen the leg, good, we'll bend the knee, close the door, kick to warrior three, lengthen the leg, breathe in, breathe out, and come back forward and down, left knee up, we'll open the door, Lengthen the leg out, bend the knee, back to center, kick back to warrior three, extend the leg, find your edge, breathe, focus, and come back. Tadasana, circle the arms, hands to the heart, exhale. Circle the arms, back to heart center. One more time. Pause here for a moment, close your eyes. Take a moment to set an intention for your practice today. Whatever that may be for you, maybe you'd like to be more present Pay attention to your breathing. Maybe you'd like to send a little extra love to someone in your life. Whatever it may be, get clear and take three breath cycles in and out, repeating your intention to yourself.
Beautiful. Let's inhale to circle the arms. Blink open the eyes as you look upward and then we'll swan dive forward and down. So open your arms as you fold forward and down. Fingertips find the ground. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, let's step our right foot back. Lower the knee down. Find Anjani Asana here. Nice big opening of the heart. Notice your ability to sink your hips will work into the low back. Hands come forward and down. Plant your palms. Step back. Back plank, go through your flow. You might want to slow it down, but you might feel kind of warm too. So coming back to downward dog, right foot floats to the ceiling, breathing in. We'll lunge it forward, breathing out. Left knee comes down. Fingers sweep up and back. Soften the shoulders. You got it. Hands forward and down. We're stepping forward. Inhale. Exhale, left foot steps back. Fingers sweep up. Good. Hands forward and down. You'll find your flow. Breathe with each movement. Left foot to the ceiling, inhale. Left foot lunges forward, exhale. Right knee down. Fingers sweep up and back. Mm -hmm. Hands forward and down. Tuck back toes, float knee, step forward. Halfway lift. And we'll fold here. Inhale, look forward. Stand up, exhale, circle your arms. Inhale to the heart, exhale. Good. Pause here. Repeat your intention three more times in your mind. Notice the shift in your heart rate. Circle the arms, blink open the eyes, inhale. And fold forward, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Right foot back, exhale, lower the knee, Anjani Asana, sweep it up, beautiful. Now from here, hands forward and down, tuck your back toes, float the knee. We're walking the hands over to the right and pivoting through the back foot so the heel is down, toes are up, Skandasana, low side lunge. Your hands could be on the ground if that's easier, or you could bring them in prayer in front of your heart. Breathe in, breathe out. Spread your right toes. Excellent. Now we're coming back to a lunge. So your hands come forward, your back foot pivots, heel is up. Step your back toes in a bit. Lengthen your left leg and draw your right heel to the mat. You need to pull your belly in and slide your right hip forward, your left hip back. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Folding the upper body, looking at your left shin. Beautiful. Let's bend into the left knee. Plant your palms, back heel is lifted, step to plank, go through a flow. Right foot floats to the ceiling as you breathe in. Then we lunge, right foot forward, exhale, left knee comes down. Anjaniasana, sweep the hands up and back. Beautiful. Hands come forward and down. We tuck the back toes to float the knee. We walk the hands over to the left as we pivot the back foot, toes up, heel down. Hands could stay on the ground or come to prayer. Your choice. Work to spread your left toes and open your heart. This is a tricky posture, I find. Some people, it's super easy though, right? Like it just depends on your body. Another breath in and out. Good. Let's turn back forward. Take your time. Come into your high lunge. 
Step your back foot in a little so you can more easily lengthen the right leg, lower the left heel. Find your pyramid pose. Your right hip pulls back, left hip pulls forward. You can soften and relax through the upper body to your edge. Breathe in, breathe out. Can you feel your upper back expand with breath? Can you feel your navel cinch back into your waist? Or I should say into the sacrum. And take your time. Let's bend into the right knee. Lift the left heel. Step forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, left foot steps back. Lower the knee. Fingers sweep up. Beautiful. Let's bring the right hand down to the mat outside the right hip or just reaching. Left hand reaches to the right. So big opening. Beautiful. And take your time. We'll bring the hands forward and down inside the right foot. Pull the hips back in space, lengthen the right leg, shine the toes to the ceiling, spread them out. Then we'll bend into the right knee and shift maybe into a lower dragon, lowering your elbows down. If that's not going to fly, don't worry about it. Just find the dragon's lunge that suits you for just another breath. Beautiful. We'll come onto the hands if elbows were down, back toes tuck, right hand comes around, find your flow, right foot steps back, lower down, open your heart, and come back to down dog. Left foot floats to ceiling, breathe in, and we'll exhale, lunge it forward. Right knee comes down, we'll find our Anjani Asana. Left hand comes down, right hand reaches over. Both hands come forward and down inside, left foot. Breathe in. As you breathe out, we pull the hips back, left leg lengthens, toes shine up, give them a nice spread. Work the hips back, your navel drawing in and back. We'll bend into the left knee and maybe your elbows come down, maybe not. Either way, you're finding a semi-enjoyable dragon. <laughs> Full inhale, exhale. See if you can expand the back side of your body. Beautiful. We'll come back up onto the hands. Left hand around, left foot, or to the outside. Back toes tuck, float knee, step forward. Halfway lift and fold. Give your head a little nod and shake here. And then look forward again, halfway lift. And let's stand up. Circle the arms, inhale. And to the heart, exhale. Pause here. Three times, repeat your intention to yourself. Circle the arms, breath in. Breath out, fold forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Right foot goes back, exhale, lower the knee down, Anjani Asana. Beautiful. All right, hands come forward and down. Pull your hips back in space. Shine the left toes to the ceiling. Great. Now hold that position with the legs, upper body comes up. Optional. Open your chest to the right so you can look to your right heel and your right hand lands there. Your left hand reaches back. You could also plant your left foot on the mat, 
that might make the balance feel a little bit easier because this is tricky. And then nice and easy, bring yourself back forward and up, hands forward and down, bend into the front knee, plant palms, flow, step back, nice and easy. Right toes sweep to the ceiling, breathing in. And we lunge forward, breathing out. Right foot comes forward and down. Left knee lands down. Untuck the toes. Fingertips on the mat. We pull the hips back. Lengthen the front leg. Shine the toes up. So while we're here, you want to have your hips above your left knee. So that's the whole point of bringing the hips back. So then we engage through the core, upper body comes up. You might even want to take your front leg wider. It might feel easier for you, okay? But again, foot could be down if that's better. Start to just rotate to the left. See if you can find your left heel. If you can, you might bring your left hand there. And then your right hand can sweep up and back. Breathe in, breathe out. And just as carefully as you went in, the right hand guides you forward. We bend into the front knee to bring our hands down. Lift the back toes and let's step forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Let's send the left foot back again, exhale. Okay, so we'll try it again, but we'll keep the right foot on the mat this time. So pull your hips back in space, keep the sole of the foot down. Upper body pulls up and just see how you feel there. Start to open your heart to the left. Once you find that balance, yeah, you might have more space to stretch, right? And then maybe you can find your heel, but there is that, stretching sensation like you are reaching out of yourself yeah pretty cool right let's come all the way up take your time hands come forward and down let's just slide the back heel in and down to table plant your palms and go to cat cow three times Beautiful. Come into stillness and then go through your flow, lengthening to plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Left foot sweeps to the ceiling, inhale. Lunge it forward, exhale. Right knee down. Okay, so we'll try it with the sole of the left foot staying down. Pull your hips back in space. Take your time. Bring your upper body up. You might have more space to stretch. See what's up. Start to rotate to the right. Maybe you can see your foot and maybe you can grab it or touch it and your left hand reaches back. But you know what? Maybe not. Find your edge today. The balance is a lot as it is. Bring your upper body up. Take your time. Hands forward and down, slide your front foot back into table. Adjust your hands, three cat cow. Keeping a fairly moderate pace. Just notice the movement in your shoulders and hips. And we'll come into table. Let's tuck the toes to lift to downward dog. Breathe in to look forward. We'll step our right foot forward and then step your left foot forward. Halfway lift, fold, look forward, stand up, circle the arms, hands to the heart. Beautiful. Let's relax the arms down. So you could step your feet maybe a little wider than your hips. Shoulder width is probably going to be best. 
And let's just bring the left hand to the left hip. The right hand will reach forward, shoulder height, palm faces in. And then reach up, start to spin your palm out, and we're going to let the whole body rotate gently to the right. As the palm spins back, watch it, spin it all the way back, reach as far behind you as you can. Your thumb is down now, palm facing in. And then once you reach your edge, bring the hand in, but start to now spin it so the pinky can come forward and then rotate as you bring your hips back neutral, hands reach up. So we're getting this whole big motion through the whole body, the eyes, the neck, the shoulder, the ribs, the, the hips, finding that beautiful rotation coming all the way forward. So I know the part with like, the, the rotation can feel tricky with the hand, but if you really just kind of think about it less and focus on, oh yeah, I'm just trying to circle as best as I can in both directions, that's all that's really happening. So now still keep doing what you're doing, but the next time you're coming forward and up, you can start to reach over to the left. So we're getting even more of a turn. And then you have a big scoop and around and reach back. So it's almost like a figure eight you're drawing, but it's so much easier to do if you just kind of let your body guide you instead of being too analytical with the motion. But you're getting a full bit of rotation through your whole body. So just do like two more. Allowing your body to simply move in the waves as you breathe, as you shift your weight, as you stretch out of yourself. And then the next time you're coming forward, just pause and we'll hang out here. Let your arms relax. And just notice the difference between the sides, particularly around the hips and the shoulders. You might feel a lot more open on the right side. So let's see what's happening. Right hand onto the right hip. And we start nice and easy. So the left hand reaches forward, palm faces in. We allow the chest to just open naturally as we look at our hand, the palm faces out. As we look back, the palm starts to face away from us, thumb down, and then the hand comes back in, the palm starts to face out again, and then we spiral it back to the midline, yeah? And come forward and up. Follow the hand with your eyes. Nice and smooth. Work that rotation with the palm out, pinky forward, and then just flip it around as you come up through center. And just notice the attention to detail you've got on this side because, well, we've already programmed it into the other side. Then we'll keep going here. But now we start to work a little bit more with our edges. So if it feels good for you, you can start to slowly reach maybe toward the midline as you come forward. Maybe you can eventually start reaching over to the right and finding that big circle. But again, if it doesn't feel like your body wants to get there naturally yet, give it a few more rotations of just reaching through center and just see what opens up. You may notice little tiny shakes and twitches like we do when we practice any kind of somatic movement, right? So just be kind with yourself. And remember, we're allowing the movement from our eyes down through our neck, our shoulders, our arms. Just do a few more rounds. And again, not being too concerned with whether you're getting the pattern exactly right or not. 
it doesn't matter. Are you getting some beautiful movement and rotation in your body and newfound awareness in your mind body connection? Great. That's all we're looking for. Beautiful. So the next time you come forward, let's just pause and let the arms relax, hang out here. Sweep your hands forward, blink open your eyes, and then reach your hands up, turn your toes out, your heels in, but you do want shoulder width, maybe even a bit wider. We're pushing the bum back so that we can lower down in a squat. Bring your hands to heart center and get your spine nice and tall. Inhale and exhale. Beautiful. Now from here, just let your hands reach forward so you can settle your hips down. And we'll work um, a little bit of forward fold action. So if you know that having your legs straight is not going to work for you, this is where you might want to put your bolster behind your knees or behind your thighs so that you can find that space of support. Now, grab your big toes with your peace fingers. So again, if you need the bolster under your knees, please do it. If your legs feel happy straight, then do that. We're getting nice and tall with the spine. So your arms are straight. You're lifting as high as you possibly can. On your exhale, elbows pull toward the floor as your chest pulls forward. Inhale, lengthen, lift your heart. Exhale. Fold as you pull your chest forward, you're pulling back on your toes and your toes are pushing forward. So you've got that beautiful resistance. Inhale, up, exhale, fold. Good, go a little deeper. Inhale, lift, exhale, fold, pull your chest forward. Mm -hmm. Pull your toes forward, inhale, up and exhale fold this time we'll hold for a few breaths so use that strength between your fingers and toes to help the action of the crown coming forward this will help you feel the lengthening in your lower back your belly is in and on the thighs you might notice a shift in body temperature here good two more breaths in and out and release undo through the fingers sit all the way up if you had a bolster you might set it aside we'll bring the soles of the feet together knees are wide hands are on the ankles chest is lifting high and then work your heart forward your elbows might come to the mat maybe not think about drawing the outer thighs toward the ground Breathe in and breathe out. Feel your outer edges of the feet pressed together and notice the connection to the muscles in the outer line of your legs. And then take your time, come all the way up. Close and through the legs, give them a little shake. And shift into table pose so you can cross your legs and just shift forward or however way you like. Now, the knees are hip distance apart. Bring your feet wider than your hips. So you could see your feet outside your hips if you look back. We're working into hero's pose. So slowly walk your hands back as you sit your hips between your heels. Now you may discover you want to sit on a block or you could use your bolster too to send it lengthwise out behind you. So you're just sitting on the short edge of it. But either way, we'll find ourselves in hero's pose and make the adjustments. So we want the soles of the feet facing the ceiling. 
and really do meaningfully have a look at yourself and be kind because we all have slightly different alignments right but just check yourself out on either side like are the heels balanced you know the positioning of them how are your ankles feeling like all of these little things try to have the soles of your feet facing up as best as you can and balance through the each heel like i see i have a slightly different heel position on the right side than i do the left but that's just the way my body is right so notice the things but don't go too wild with your adjustments once you're settled in interlace through your fingers and send the palms to the ceiling so this is probably one of my favorite things in hero's pose is when we have this full extension happening here because you can really tap into that sensation of rooting to rise so the more you push your hands up you feel your hips can sink deeper right now just do teeny tiny circles with the hands like you're just stirring a little bit so just little circles and then go the other way like you're drawing little circles with your palms good and then come to center and we'll just release let the hands come down relaxing arms and hands wherever is comfortable for you we'll just pause here for a moment let everything settle in notice the balance across shoulders and hips few more cycles of breath here. Beautiful. Take your time from here. Use your hands to help you gently lift your weight up and off of your prop and tuck your toes find downward dog a nice easy downward dog you might want to shake out the legs a little bit bend one knee and then the other see what's up but notice that downward dog is kind of a relaxing pose now isn't it breathe in breathe out let's lower the knees down um, I highly suggest using your blanket for this one because we're moving into frog. So we don't really have space for both of us to go widthwise here. So if you have space to go widthwise on your mat, go for it. Um, but if you don't, then use a blanket. Okay, so you do you. But either way, I know you already know what to do. But we'll come into tabletop pose. Knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders, and then we start to open up. So the knees are going to open to your first edge, so you can check yourself out. Inner edges of the legs, the feet are on the mat, the toes point outward, ankles align under knees, knees align with hips. So we want to keep it that way. Don't push back or forward as best as you can. Now, open your knees a little more because you've got a tiny bit more space there and then lower your elbows to the floor and we'll hang out so definitely double check that you're still in your correct alignment we're not looking to lay the belly on the floor unless of course your pelvis is already on the floor with the same alignment and some of you might be there you know, especially if you do a lot of dancing or martial arts or gymnastics. Breath is just easy in and out of the nose.
Notice the silence of the mind. Couple more cycles of breath here. Notice any shift in your body temperature. And nice and easy, take your time. You're bringing your weight forward and down until you can easily just let yourself relax. Then you mindfully, just one leg at a time, just start to inch them straight and bring them in toward each other, but just move slow. There's no rush. There can be so much stuff that feels stuck in the hips. So once you have your legs together, just hang out. Let your head relax down. And then once you're ready, just take your time and slide yourself onto your yoga mat with your bolster. You're laying on your belly. Sorry, we're coming into Sphinx pose with the bolster underneath the chest. So, of course, we don't want to bother our breathing here. So it's like above the low ribs so that you're not impeding on any movement of the diaphragm. Your elbows are drawn in toward your shoulders. So you're really kind of like tucking everything in here. And this allows you to slide your chest forward and up, push your elbows down. Now push your pubic bone down in the ground. Notice how much lighter everything just became. Now imagine sliding your shoulder blades down. With all of that, take a bow with your head about halfway. And just hang out here. You'll find the really nice sweet spot where you get a little bit of traction. So a bit of a lengthening sensation through your neck. You might fold a little deeper. Breathe in, breathe out. And on your next breath in, we start to unfurl lift the chest optional float your forearms seal pose exhale slowly lower back down and take your bow two more like that inhale start to lift optional to float the arms in your seal Exhale to start to make your way down. Enjoy that fold. And one more time. Inhaling your way up. Find that smooth action and we'll exhale down. Folding. we'll come up neutral take your time to bring your elbows onto your bolster and just hang out here for a sec a little bit of an extra back bend tuck your toes lift your hips as you slide your knees in and come to child's pose with your arms on the bolster Maybe your head can relax toward the mat. Fabulous. Let's come up to an easy table so we can set the uh, bolster aside. Then just turn to lay on your back with your knees bent, feet on the mat. 
Bring your knees to stack in over your hips. Bring your legs together. So legs are squeezing together and then we'll just draw some circles with the knees. Working all the space in the sacral bone, the back of the hips, the lower back. Draw the circle the other way. Good, keep circling this way and cross your left ankle over your right. Love the knee circles. You can make the circles as big as you like. Good, switch directions with your circles. Go through all those little crunchy spaces. Keep circling the same way. Cross your right ankle over your left. Nice and easy. Let's switch directions with the circles. Fabulous. Let's come into stillness. Let the feet come down. Let's cross the right leg over the left. Slide your hips over to the right. Pull the knees in and lower into a twist. Knees come over and down to the left. Do your best to keep your shoulder blades flat on the ground. That might mean you push into your left arm a little bit to help your chest stay square with the ceiling. Breathe in, breathe out. And nice and easy, come back to center. Switch it up. Slide your hips to the left. Knees pull in, over and down to the right. Same thing, we're looking to have the shoulder blades flat. So that might mean you push a little bit into your right arm to help you with the rotation. And nice and easy. Come back to center. So the feet are on the mat. Neutral hips. Lift your hips just like an inch off the ground and then lower them, like let them just hit the ground. And then we'll just do that. Dribble the little basketball, bouncing just nice and easy. We're not trying to hurt ourselves. We're just giving a nice bit of awareness into the back of the hips. And you can kind of like lean a little bit to the right and get a tiny bit into the glute. And then you could do the same thing over to the left. Feeling that beautiful reverberation through the whole body, come back to center. Beautiful. And then just come to stillness. Moving into a round of breathing. If you would like a more meditative experience, you could put your blanket over your eyes so you have a bit of darkness. We'll work into our Tomo breathing or Tibetan breath of fire. So in and out of the mouth. We'll start with the knees bent, feet on the mat so it can feel easier to breathe into the belly. We'll do a bunch of repetitions of breath on the final cued breath, exhale everything out, hold it as long as you can. When you need to, inhale, hold that for 10 seconds and then let your natural breath return. All right, I know you know what to do. So let's begin, breathing in, letting go. Breathing in, letting go. 
keep going. Fill your belly. Halfway there. Lengthen your legs down. Last five. Four. Three. Two. Last one in, all the way out, hold. Soften and sink into your mat. Feel your body soften and sink a little deeper as you lay here in space. You can feel the heaviness through the back side of your body and lightness through the front side.
Deepen through your breath. And let it go. Lengthen through the arms and legs. Give yourself a lovely long stretch and reach through the body. And mindfully just bend through one knee at a time and bring them then both into your chest for an easy hug. Maybe you want to rock side to side. And eventually just roll to the left and press yourself up. We'll find a seat that's comfortable. Palms come to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Close the eyes, notice how you're feeling. Remember your intention, enjoy a breath in. Let it go on the breath out. And let's draw a full breath in of loving gratitude into ourselves and a full breath out of love and gratitude for everyone else. And thank you for our practice today. Namaste. <sighs> well, I sure hope you feel great and enjoyed all those wonderful spaces that we opened up together. So see you again soon. Much love, everyone. Bye.